I want to talk about koalas and other native wildlife because we know that billions of flora and fauna have been destroyed in the bushfires right across the country. Yesterday, the Minister for the Environment, Susan Lee, announced a $50 million wildlife package. She did warn that koalas may be officially listed as endangered in some parts of the country. Some experts are even warning that native species may have already become extinct, that we just don't know the full impact of the bushfires yet. Matthew Hayward is an Associate Professor of Ecology at the University of Newcastle, and he's on the line for us now. Matthew, hello to you. Yeah, Deborah, how are you? I'm well. Have you ever seen the sort of damage from the bushfires that we're witnessing from the wildlife to the plants and the animals like this before? Oh, they are unprecedented. They're the largest fires that we've ever seen. So, no, that's, that's never occurred before. And it has caused decimation to our wildlife, to our, you know, the people that have been affected by them. So it's, it's been horrible to see. Let's start with the native animals, the koalas for one. Susan Lee announcing this wildlife package yesterday. A lot of focus on the damage to the koala population. Will they bounce back from this? They've lost a lot of habitat and they probably will be downlisted to endangered. But... They've, they've probably lost about a third of their distribution, their habitat, in the fires. But other species have lost much more. So we've got species like the palm, will be up on the uh, north coast of New South Wales and south coast of Queensland, that's lost kind of maybe up to 80% of each, its entire distribution. So it's a species that may well be under much more pressure. And then there's the tiny things that we just don't know much about. That entire distribution could have been burnt out and are likely to have gone extinct probably before we've even described them. So they'd be new to science, but gone extinct. And how will we ever know if if they have reached that dire level? Oh, we won't know those species. Um, and it's, it may be like a, a kind of game of Jenga where we can afford to lose one or two species, but when we get lots and lots of species dropping out of the ecosystem, then the entire ecosystem falls, falls apart. And that's going to have dire consequences for humanity. Because that's the thing, it's all interrelated, isn't it? If, if, if one species is gone, the flow-through effect to the broader ecosystem can be appalling. Oh, definitely. And, and I think when you, you know, you've got to relate, relate back to you know, what humans are going to be, how humans are going to be affected. And things like pollination services that we currently rely on invertebrates and bees and things like that to do for us, if we lose some of those species, we're going to have to go out with little paintbrushes and paint almond trees and a whole range of other crops that we currently are really reliant on. So we can't afford to lose these species. What can be done though? Because it's one of those things, the fires have come through where we're in the middle of summer. We're not out of the woods as it were yet. We know that the bushfire situation is definitely not finished, not complete here in Australia by any measure over the summer period this year and into next. So what, what can be done? I think, you know, the government's starting off on the right track. I think they're trying to look after the biodiversity that has survived. So there's, the New South Wales government's put out, you know, carrots and sweet potatoes to provide a bit of food for animals, particularly the macropods in the burnt out areas. But that's just a start. And, you know, we've got to look after the animals that have been injured, but really they're going to struggle when they get put back into the wild. So we need to ensure that that habitat's adequately protected. And so, you know, that's, the, the habitat's not going to respond really until we get some decent rain. And so we're really relying on the fires being put out and good rain coming back and, and then the vegetation will re-sprout. Mm. And then we can start seeing, you know, good responses from the animals. But until that happens, we're really just kind of treading water. But we need you know, much more funding to ensure our biodiversity is protected. This is our, our nat national natural heritage. And we provide so little money to uh, monitoring our threatened species, to implementing management actions on our threatened species. We no longer produce uh, recovery plans for our threatened species, so it's very uh, challenging to work out what you're supposed to do to ensure the protection of the threatened species. So, you know, we, we're just not investing enough. And in terms of insects, even, you know, you think of koalas, kangaroos, wombats, those sort of native species, but all the way through to, to insects too, you, you sort of don't really think about the impact, but they've been hit by these fires as well. Oh, exactly. And they're, you know, they're some of the species that we just don't know enough about that could have been wiped out entirely. And, and they're the real key kind of Jenga pieces that might be a crucial element to the ecosystem because they're the foundation of, of so many uh, trophic webs uh, and networks that you know, if you pull them out, there might be another species that relies on them that goes extinct. And you might see a whole chain of extinction that drives a you know, massive change in the ecosystem. So, yeah, they're the species that are likely to have gone extinct, but we don't know the impact of that. Could there be a positive, though, to come out of this, Matthew? Because so much of it is is pretty grim and, and looking at, you know, very worst-case scenarios here. Could, could the positive out of this be that we really do take stock of our native species, our flora and fauna, and appreciate it more than we have today? 
I did. I hope so, Deborah. I really hope so. Because Australia has such a unique biodiversity. You know, we've got species that don't occur anywhere else. All the marsupials that belong here in Australia. And, you know, we're the kind of global uh, nation responsible for conserving them. But we need to really do the hard work to ensure that we do conserve them. So, yeah, I really do hope that society recognises the value of this biodiversity and how uniquely Australian it is. And then we get out there and act accordingly and ensure that it's conserved into the future. Mm. So in terms of rebuilding communities affected by the fires, rebuilding populations of wildlife, is it going to be something that can be done effectively with the resources we have? I know things like koalas, for example, you can't move them to different areas because they rely on particular species of of food and of the, the, the trees that they eat, the leaves that they eat. You can't transplant them to another part because they simply don't eat that different type of tree. Yeah, and lots of species are like that. Um, you know, koalas are really specific in the number of trees that they'll, or tree species they'll eat. But there's lots of species like kangaroo island donut only occurs on a small part of kangaroo island. It is virtually been entirely kind of burnt out. So it's another species. There's a subspecies of glossy black cockatoo on kangaroo island that's lost the vast majority of its habitat. There's lots and lots of species that, yeah, may be gone entirely. So, yeah, society hopefully will wake up and, and really learn to value our species. Yeah. All right, Matthew, it's, it's grim hearing this information, but it's a real wake-up call that we need to, to heed and appreciate your time this afternoon. Well, thanks very much, Deb, and thanks for promoting this as an important issue. Yeah, Matthew Hayward there, Associate Professor at the Uni of Newcastle, the School of Environmental Life Sciences. And it is one of those things that we may not know for, for a long time, the impact of these bushfires. But the bushfires, the bush, the, it grows back. And, and we know that and we've seen that from, from prior fires. We know that it regenerates. And if we can ensure that the, the animals that live in these regions can actually come back as well, 